If you are interested in starting your own podcast, we use Buzzsprout because it is simple and easy to use. Buzzsprout can get your show listed on every major platform while giving you the resources for a great podcast website, audio players that can drop into other websites, detailed analytics to see how people are listening to your podcast, and tools to promote your episodes. Podcasting isn't hard when you have the right partners, and that is why over 100,000 podcasters are already subscribed to Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Following the link in our episode descriptions, let's Buzzsprout know that we sent you. So in return, you will receive a $20 Amazon gift card from Buzzsprout while signing up for a paid plan. Most importantly, every subscription through our link is always appreciated and helps support our show so we can continue delivering the quality content that you guys listen to. That being said, back to the show. Hello, and welcome to Comic Book Junkies. I'm Andrew. This is Joe. And we're coming at you with a little recap of our recent weekend out. It was my birthday recently. Joe did the honors of coming out my way. So he decided to make a trip out. We didn't do a whole lot, you know, just kind of big chilling, do what we do, hit up comic book stores, came through the next day. We went to a little con out my way he hasn't been to before. I frequent them. I've been telling him for like months now that they're like the best cons around, even though, I mean, it's not a big tuna con like your San Diego, your New York, anything like that. But if you're you're like a strict buyer seller of comics it's definitely one you need to hit up um but before we get into all that like i mentioned he came out on my actual birthday um it was a saturday we didn't have a whole lot to do weather was so 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 we figured we'd go hit up uh, our local comic book shop um we brought it up before joe recently went there uh prior to him scoring a bunch of those green lantern books with juan if you listen to our recent episodes but you know they're kind of our local honey hole so we decided to go and check them out just to see what's up and i'll say say I didn't get anything that day. I was kind of, you know, saving up all my pennies just to go and get something the next day, um, knowing that I would find something at con. But that didn't stop Joe, because anytime Joe finds a bin that has something that's anywhere between 10 and $30, he's bound to buy at least one. So I'll let him take over and, you know, walk through what he picked up. Nothing can stop me. Nothing, dude. dude a menace. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> He's got calloused fingers from digging through those bins. <laughs> um, yeah. So the day before, we're celebrating his birthday. So for everybody listening, happy birthday, Burger. He didn't find well, anything worth coming home with, but I sure did. So to start off with Captain America 360. So it's the first full appearance of Crossbones. I feel like the high print run and the fact that the cameo is 359 in the movie kind of ruin the value of this book but I feel like it's going to age well because I would argue this is still one of the best Captain America villains it's still the better copy to have over issue 359 and if you find a cheap enough copy I think it's just worth grabbing that day yeah I mean really for oh my bad I was just gonna hop in I agree with you Uh, you know as far as cap villains go you only got the red skull you got Zemo and then it's really a crossbones is like the number three tuna I mean other than that you might be able to say like bat rock the leaper but like you know we're starting to get into the weeds a little bit now and uh, you know I had this discussion just not to go off topic too much but with jazz the other day it's like these Marvel characters don't necessarily have great villains out they might each have one a piece outside of let's say Spider Spider-Man and the X-Men, really. I mean, if you want to count the Fantastic Four. But like outside of that, these there's not a ton of great villains on the Marvel side. I mean, the good ones are amazing. But like outside of that, it's kind of far and few between, in my opinion. So I think, you know, you kind of rounding out getting that crossbones is a great move. Um, It goes with your Silver Age uh, Red Skull as well. For sure it does. They had 359 too, and it was pretty clean. It was only five bucks. I don't know that I need one, but for five bucks, it couldn't hurt. I don't know. But anyway... I also picked up for $5 a Green Lantern issue 50. It's part of the third volume. So that's first appearance of Parallax and Kyle Rayner's first appearance as Green Lantern when he takes over for Hell because I think Parallax takes over Hell Jordan in this issue. Probably, again, a stupid high print run and not that old of a book, but it's glow in the dark. And enough happens in this book where I feel like it's kind of slept on still. So excited to get that for five. But lastly, after I completely checked out, Berger pointed a book to me, and that's Captain America issue six of volume five. So something that we read for this podcast, first full appearance of Bucky Barnes Winter Soldier. So again, almost left the store if Berger didn't point it out to me because I was completely cashed out at that point. And uh, the price was just too good to leave that at the store. 
Yeah, I was just standing next to him because I was just dicking around. I wasn't buying shit that day. And he literally just pulled his credit card out, out of the little chip reader. And then I was like, can I take a look at that, Gary? And there was like a little, well, I just spilled the beans a little bit. Our local shop basically had honcho. His name's Gary. He rules. So I don't know if Gary hears this, but shouts out, Gary. But I was just looking at like, usually they kind of redid their back wall a little bit. It used to be all the uh, big ticket books. Um, but now they've recently kind of gotten horny for CGC. It's kind of a new thing for them. So apparently that whole wall is just like a bunch of slabbed books. But at the bottom row, I see a few raw books. And you know me, I'm I'm a raw dog. I like to get all the raw stuff if I can get it. I don't need those plastic tombs ruining my books. So I'm just looking and just for shits and giggles, I saw like a squirrel girl and there was like a small little stack behind it. I was like, oh, yeah, what's that going for? Had no intention of buying it. So I don't know why I asked. But I was like, can we take a look at that? And Joe was just like, what's the price? And as soon as he saw the like ticket on there, he's just like, oh, yeah, I'll take that, Gary. And it, it was he didn't even have to think about it. So, you know, there's a good little bit of synergy just sniffing out them books. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm on the hunt. I will say this. I did leave not buying a first appearance of Immortal Hulk. So I don't want to jinx it, but I'm definitely grabbing that if it's there next time I'm out that way. But the reason being is because Burger was insistent that I would find a book the next day when we actually go to con. Yeah, and we'll get into that in just a minute because I'm with you. There's a book that I wanted to get there that I keep thinking about, even though it's not a major book. I showed you that like Sharon Carter, Bat Rock the Leaper, Tales of Suspense book. I've low key been thinking about that. I keep thinking that one of these days during the week, I'm going to go up and just go pick that up if it's still there because it was pretty nice for the money. It was like 30, 40 bucks. And I was just like, well, shit. Um, but yeah, you know, I ruined your setup, your perfect segue into our next topic about what you found at our other Comic-Con. Do you just want to get right into it? Let's get right into it. So at Con, place I've never been before, somewhere Burger has gone in the past, a lot smaller than the Motor City, obviously, but still had a lot of vendors and a lot of big books. So um, it's just a local Knights of Columbus, like a, basically a glorified Elks Club type deal. I don't know if Knights of Columbus are like nationwide, but here in the Midwest, they're all over the place. But they put on like a small little $3 entry, gets you a raffle ticket type con. It's literally just a bunch of old dudes and guys like us in a little cramped room just looking at a bunch of cool wall books. Go ahead. Shout out Elks Club. But first book I got, Batman The Dark Knight Returns. So this is the first appearance of Carrie Kelly. She was a Robin later on. Kind of like a self-contained story, but uh, I've always wanted one because this is probably my favorite Batman story. And I think she still makes for a great Robin despite the small sample size. From that same vendor, I also got a DC Superstars 11 solo Zatanna story. Big fan of the character. And I remember being really jealous when Burger found one of these because the cover is really cool. And this isn't a key issue, but something that just passed the vibe check. And I found one for a good price. That day, different vendor. I got a Detective Comics 358, first appearance of Spellbinder. I've been on a huge Batman Beyond kick lately. Just finished season two last night, actually. And I feel like you can't go wrong buying up first appearance of any Batman related villain or Detective Comic key issue in general, even if the villain or book is a lot smaller in scope. But something I've been having my eyes on for a while and another book that Berger pointed out to me, Green Lantern 20. First appearance of Black Hand. So super stoked that the Green Lantern show is not getting canceled from what we understand so far. I doubt this villain makes it there, but regardless, trying to fill out everything Green Lantern and this damn near completes that collection other than buying the first appearance of Hell Jordan. I would like to get a Green Lantern 21 from volume one, which is a first appearance of Dr. Polaris, but that can wait. But other than that, just a Green Lantern 25. I forgot which volume, but it's the first appearance of Petrocitus and the other non Green Lanterns, both cover A and the one in 25 variant, if I get around to it. Yeah, I think you had great pickups that day. You were wandering all around. So to peel back the curtain again, like uh, it was me, my fiance, Jazz and Joe, we all went tootling. I, you know, it was on the promises of you'll find something cool at this con. And also we're going to get a sack of like 1950 style hamburgers once we're done. 
fun. So it, it set the tone for a good day. And once we got in there, man, it was it was kind of bumping a little bit. I mean, for how small the con is and, you know, for there being little to no hype about it. Um, I mean, there had to be what, at least at least a dozen, probably like 15 vendors. And none of them were really slouches. It, you know, you go to some of these shows and you'll see a guy who's loaded up on like 90s X-Men, all the worthless crap and this and that. I mean, if you like it, that's cool for you. But you know what? we're looking for we want key issues we want minor keys we have fun with that it doesn't even have to be a key it just has to be cool man but there wasn't really any vendors that disappointed and you'd be surprised some of these boys had some big books we saw some crazy golden age stuff the blue chip silver age books that everyone looks for i mean literally now not everybody there takes card for payment one guy rudely let joe know that when he asked wasn't even a seller he, some dickhead just was flipping through a bin and told him he's like why don't you just go to the atm i wish i was there for that bro he would have would have bucked him up fucking push him into the bins tell him you're a dollar bin trash <laughs> <laughs> get in there so for me i mean i guess you guys don't know but I, I, don't, I don't know i'm weirdo i'm pretty stingy when it comes to my money except when it comes to comic books but it takes me a long time to solidify my pick on what i'm gonna blow my load on you know and uh I just circled around that place. It's basically one big loop for, I don't know, shit, we were there at least an hour. And uh, man, there was so many potential pickups I could have made. But we found this one guy I've actually bought from him before. He's pretty cool. I think it's a husband and wife team. They could travel around. I even saw them at Motor City. So uh, they kind of rule. But I picked up my smaller book of the day. I got a New Mutants issue 26. It's the first full appearance of Legion. So I mean, most of my exposure came from, I think, back in college watching the show. Uh, we both knew a guy and his roommate we'd run into pretty often. And he really liked it. He liked a bunch of weird shows that were like on AMC and FX at that time. So I kind of got exposed through him, uh, even though he's not super cool. But the show was good. And, uh, you know, I watched that and, you know, just my general exposure to the X-Men after that. I thought it was cool. I recently picked up issue 25, his first cameo from our local shop like a few weeks ago for like three bucks. So I figured why not complete the set when this is like an 8-0 for, I don't know, 15, 17 dollars. I figured it was worth it just to leave with it. But then my bigger pickup of the day, which wasn't big monetarily, even though it could have been Brave and the Bold issue 60. It's the first appearance of Donna Troy Wonder Girl. It's also the second appearance of the Teen Titans as a team. And it also is the very first time that they're actually named the Teen Titans. So if you guys listen back to our uh, Comic-Con episode, you know that I didn't get anything at the con that day, but we hit up a secret shop out in Plymouth. Oops, I spilled the beans for you locals. You don't know which one, though. Might have a... There's a bunch of them. You'll just have to find it. Don't worry, guys. But anywho, I got the Brave and the Bold 54 that day. And that was the first appearance of the Teen Titans. It wasn't something I was necessarily planning on that day, but it's something I kind of had on my radar. So I figured, why not get the second appearance? Um, I'm kind of quickly working on a Teen Titans collection. I didn't get to mention this either, but Jazz, uh, my fiance, she got me a DC Comics Presents 26 and a new Teen Titans issue one. Two books I really needed. You know, obviously the first Cyborg, Starfire, Raven, and then issue one is just their first as a team. It's their second appearance total. And it's the first appearance of Grant Wilson, Ravager, Deathstroke Son, which I needed for my Deathstroke supporting characters collection. But aside from that, so with all of those considered, I pretty much have every Teen Titans major character now. The only two I'm really missing are Beast Boy from Doom Patrol 99 and Aqualad, which is I forget exactly which issue, but it's from Adventure Comics. So those are two high up on the list for me to get next, just so I could completely round out the core members. But getting this there, I'll just be candid. It only ran me 50 bucks. One of the under other vendors, when I had already bought the book and I just set it down to look at some other books, he's like, oh, that's a nice book. I'm like, oh, yeah, thanks. He's like, so who'd you rip off? And I started laughing a little bit and I was just like, I don't know, some dude at the other end. And this guy, I, I'm not disparaging that guy. I love that guy. He also sold me my trickster for like $80, like a few months back. Doesn't accept card. I didn't have enough cash on hand at the time, but you could buy a thousand things from that guy's 
I don't know, his boxes, his wall books. He's got a nice little setup and he's very reasonably priced. I don't know his name. I don't know if his shop or, you know, he has any type of name, but I recommend finding that guy. You'll have to hit us up specifically if you want to know who he is. Born without a name. Yeah. Man with no name. But yeah. uh, not a villain, though. Not um, a villain. Yeah. Well, I almost got some books from him, too, because um, I didn't bring cash because I assumed everybody was card or cash. 2022. Um, I thought yeah. so as well. <laughs> I could have grabbed the money for it, but if I were to have, he had a uh, Silver Age Cheetah there, and he also had a first appearance of the Defenders. So those were kind of the two books that That's a I, different guy. No, it was the same guy that you bought your um, Donna, Donna Troy th- from, wasn't no, it? No, no. Oh, yeah. He also had a Donna Troy. He but had you two actually, Donna Troys. You got the uh, Donna Troy from the vendor at the... Yep, you're right. Yeah, I got the best deal on it because that guy you're talking about, he was cool. And he had two pretty solid Donna Troys for good prices. I actually There were a lot them. of Donna Troys at this con. There were at least three. I held all of them. That guy's first. I was getting ready to plop down 130 on one. And then I went down to the other. I was like, you know, what? I got to wait. I got to see what else is here. And I went down to the other guy and it was like the same shape or better for like 75 less dollars. I was like, well, bet. I'm just going to get that then. Sorry, guy. I mean, it's not too often you find like it's not in bad shape. It's complete. It's firm. It's all that it for 50 bucks nowadays. You can't beat it. I mean, you find some like diamonds in the rough at these cons and they only happen once a month on like Sundays. So it's it's a nice little treat to go out there and go find something for like 100 bucks and like get pretty good return on value. Yeah, it was cool. The stars kind of aligned for your birthday or that weekend or whatever. And the only other thing that I really wish I would have picked up before I left is um, the same guy I got that Batman, the Dark Knight Returns from and the uh, the Zatanna Damn. cover. Yeah, he also had a booster gold for $35. Bro. Now, I think kicking myself for not getting it last time I found one for 35 but not only for that reason alone but the cool fan art we recently got with me as booster so unfortunately didn't remember to buy that until after we had left and we were getting burgers and I actually got some pretty good loaded coney fries with raw onions and mustard too but hell yeah how'd them yeah. burgers treat you does that just top off comic-con yeah, that was good. It was it was like a like a non franchise like uh, White Castle, so like a better version of White Castles, like a bigger sized like uh, you read the newspaper and you wear like a big coat and a fedora walking down the street with your lunch pail type. Oh, I just had a coffee and a cigarette. Time to go get some burgers. Yeah, like, like that the kind of burger. places that were around like when Shazam yeah. was popping off. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. that kind of vibe. But uh. Yeah. So, I mean, for this con in general, so, you know, I've been hyping it up forever and I tend to have trouble over hyping things because I get giddy and excited pretty easily, I guess. Did this Comic Con, like, it, if you want to call it that, did it live up to the hype that I kind of told you about? Did you think the selection was like pretty good for, you know, what were your expectations and then like versus reality? How'd you feel? Okay. So, I guess to compare this to like maybe like a bigger con, you can get all the same level books at places like this. So what I like is that many of like the smaller cons are mostly just comic books. So it's a lot more killer and less filler because like when you go to like a Motor City or something bigger like a San Diego, I'm sure it's just a lot of vendors that have like anime and manga stuff or like merch or whatever the case is. But it was nice that you kind of almost got like all the comic book stuff, but condensed. But I guess the biggest con pun intended is that at Ah. smaller cons you're probably only likely to see vendors probably within a hundred mile radius whereas like if you were to go to like a san diego you probably get probably more rotation or people are willing to travel to bring stuff there so it may be unique to our experience that day but i kind of was surprised to see how many vendors were cash only it's not a big deal because there was an ATM nearby, but I feel like it's a little limiting as like a business if you don't accept both or uh, if you're as lazy as I am, it's limiting that I only bought books that people that accepted card and cash because I didn't feel like withdrawing, but I had a great time. So 
I feel like this was a great way for us to celebrate. And I'm excited about how many books we were able to find that were under $100. Granted, it adds up to be like a, you might as well have bought a big book anyway, but it kind of keeps the fun going longer. And we were in there for quite a while too. So considering the room itself was a lot smaller. So I would say it was, it exceeded my expectations. And I would definitely go to something like this again. I would say the only thing that I would kind of miss going to a big con versus this is sometimes you can find like vendors who have absolutely everything. Whereas I feel like these people mostly only had key issues. Um, So I feel like you get a little more variety because like some people have like dollar bins. Some people have like more middle sections where I I was finding that a lot of the places had mostly bigger books. But no, it was a lot of fun. I would do it again in a heartbeat. For sure. Yeah, it's even become like tradition for Jazz and I to go now because the promise for her is that we get the burgers after. And for me, it usually means I get like a good uh, mid-sized key. And the good thing is, too, is you could find uh, like DC keys. Like that's the thing, too, though, I'll say. Um, I'm a little all over the place, but like while it doesn't have as much variety just because it is smaller in scope, I mean, it's a three dollar entry and a Knights of Columbus in the middle of a suburb of Detroit, little to no marketing whatsoever. So it's just for core collectors. But like the pricing's good. I mean, there are things that are at market, but I would argue that not much was above market and even a lot of it was under market value. Like at least the things I buy, like it's crazy to be able to leave each time with something under market. Um, as where, you know, usually at a larger con, you have to pay over. And if you're lucky, a guy will throw you a bone and say, oh, yeah, I'll take 30 bucks off. And then you're paying about or just under market, which I mean, it feels good all the same. But like if you're really just looking for a book and you're not expecting a lot, it's just a cool thing to do on a Sunday. And it's usually pretty bang for buck. I will say this. The places that were cash only, they had some amazing deals if you brought cash that day. So I feel like the prices were a lot more favorable at something like this than, like you said, like a bigger con like Motor City or anything bigger than that. So do you prefer this to like a bigger con? Honest to God, yeah. Like nowadays, yes. Just because, I mean... I don't know if it's the pandemic or if I'm just getting older, but like I don't care to be around the large crowds. You know, there's a bunch of dickheads in my way when I'm trying to lean over the bins and stare at the bottom shelf of the like on the wall. Like, you know, it's a lot easier to get in where you're looking. You know, I could even dig through bins. I mean, it's three bucks and it's a 20 minute drive. I'm not going to say that like I outright prefer it to like a major con because that has a whole different experience. You know, I guess it's like watching football on TV versus going to like a live game kind of. You know, I love both, but like it feels like an event when you go to the big con. But, you know, I enjoy it at the small one just as much, though. I mean, it's like going to uh, like a comic book store, uh, but it's one day only. And you're going to find things that you won't see at any of the local shops. So, I mean, the frequency, I think it might make it more for me, too, because I'll go to these fairly frequently because they are generally once a month. I mean, they go on hiatus sometimes during the summer. But, you know, once a month, I can go check out a sweet con, get a good book and call it a day. Like, I don't know. I mean, look, I mean, this is the first year I didn't buy a book at Comic-Con at Motor City. So I would almost have to argue, yeah, because I haven't left this place without a book. And whether it's 75 or 100 bucks, like, I'm happy with it all the same. Yeah, if I had a chance to only do one or the other, just one a year, I would go with the bigger con. But um, this was like everything you wanted to see, like in your comic book stores. And it kind of can replace that feeling, you know, like every time I go into my comic book stores, I kind of like want to see these types of books. And if I ever did like my poll online or whatever, I would way rather go to like one of these than like a comic book store. It was very much accessible. It was easy parking. You know what I mean? It's not so much of an event, but I guess on the flip side of that, because those bigger cons feel like an event, you know what I mean? Because you can get pictures with celebrities. You see a lot of crazy people like there's it's just a lot going on there's probably more things to do afterwards at the actual event but this was really cool and i could see myself kind of going regularly because of uh how chill it was 
Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I'll keep you posted as to when they are. That all depends on your work schedule. But uh, I definitely anticipate hitting a few more of these over the next year. I mean, I'm trying to tone it down. We've got wedding seasons coming up, being in them, having them, all this and that over the next year. But I ain't outright cutting myself off from books. So I feel like a good compromise is to go to one of these and then just shoot for something middle tier. And, you know, I'll leave happy. We'll hit up hey, more of you these. Hey, you got a pretty big book afterwards, though. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about my most recent purchase? Yeah, plug it. All right, cool. So, I mean, I wasn't necessarily looking for a book. You know, I kind of had the itch after going to the con where, you know, I'm like, I'm like, oh, man, I need something else. Oh, I'm going to buy this Beast Boy. And I'm like, Jazz, do you think buying the Beast Boy is a good idea? And she's just like, it looks nice. Yeah, you can get that. And then I'm like, oh, no, that costs too much money. And I do this and I just sit on eBay for days and I'm just like, oh, man, I'm going to get something. But uh, my new work team was so kind as to give me a gift for my birthday, which I didn't expect. I work remotely. I haven't even met them in person, but they were very kind to me. They sent me like basically a Visa MasterCard gift card. You know, you could spend it on whatever. So logically, what I have to do as a fiend is uh, go to Target.com, go ahead and make sure that that's eligible to buy an eBay e-gift card, redeem that, punch in that eBay e-gift card as soon as I uh, find something. So I was just sitting on the code. I already had it saved in my notes. I was ready to just pounce as soon as I found something. And I look kind of look all day. I do this little filtering technique, uh, looking at specific stuff. And I found nothing. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'll get this Aqualad. Oh, I'll get the Beast Boy. I'll bite the bullet. But I didn't have the conviction to just outright do it, which was kind of telling me inside that like it wasn't really what I wanted to do. So I was like, okay, I'll just sit on it. So a few hours later, I'm obviously checking again because I am a fiend. I'm right about to punch in for my lunch break and sponsored post on eBay. Iron Man issue one from uh, the 60s, his first, you know, solo series. And it was a very reasonable price, you know, as it were, like the guy even said it was price to sell. Something came up for him and he needed to move it to make a quick buck so he could cover his expenses. Fast forward to me, I'm fucking fiendishly just trying to hit buy it now, buy it now, because every Every time I see something that cool, I try to show it to Joe and he don't look at it till the next day or I just sit on it because I'm a puss and then it's gone. And I'm like, well, fuck, I could have saved like four hundred dollars in the long run if I just bought that right now. So that came up. I says bet. And then the price once I took the eBay gift card off of it, I was like, oh, for sure. That's well under market. And so, yeah, it's an Iron Man issue one. It's I mean, it's not a high grade by any means, but it's about as nice, if not a little bit nicer than my old one that I had before. You were there with me when we bought that from the guy who uh, sold you your Harley Quinn. Out by oh, me. OK. Yeah. I remember when I bought that one, we went to McDonald's afterwards and I was taking pictures. I was all geeked. And then uh, I ended up flipping it probably for my Mirror Master because I have everything cool I had to get that fucking Mirror Master. But uh, <laughs> that was a terrible run at, uh, trade in the long run. Jesus Christ, I got washed. But, you know, Iron Man made it back to the collection. It's probably about a three or so. It's got like a little bit of chipping at the bottom right corner, but it presents pretty nice. It's in a Mylar. It's complete. It's attached. It's firm. I mean, it's got like maybe a slight spine roll because the staples are more a little bit so towards the back, but it lies completely flat flat and has good like weight and structure to it. So don't really care. I just wanted to have one back in the box because there's something about, you know, an issue one. I'm weird with them and the cover's sick. And yeah, so I mean, got a little bit of house repairs coming up like literally tomorrow. So I'm going to have to table buying books for at least a few minutes. But uh, that's a good little one to cap it off. Almost like a late birthday gift to myself just because I had the little extra funds to go towards it. But yeah, I mean, couldn't be more pumped. We've had a really good year this year so far, guys. I mean, I know I have. You have had a lot of great books that you've picked up, and I'm sure that you'll have a couple more big ones before the year ends. But yeah, yeah. I was celebrating that thing like it was my own birthday. I do have <laughs> one target before the year's over, but we'll see what happens. So hopefully somewhere between Thanksgiving, Christmas, but we'll see. But we'll yeah, see. I guess that's everything I got. Anything you got to wrap up on? No, I mean, just the usual advice, just to make sure that you're telling friends, rating, reviewing, subscribing. If you haven't already done so, if you have, we appreciate it. You know, we're on socials, Instagram, CBJ pod, Facebook, CBJ podcast. We have a YouTube. It's audio only, but, you know, all of our catalogs there. If you'd like that. What do you want to do next? You want to read something you want to. I mean, I'm reading off of an iPhone at this point until I can upgrade. But, you know, I'm down to read, brother. All right. We'll figure it out. 
You'll you guys will get... find out next time. Yep. All right, guys. Till next time. Later.